Guys, I'm on a roll today. My little daughter is sleeping. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and record another video for uh, my statistics students who has their first test this week. Um, I'm going to go over exam two, part two, practice problems with you, okay? So first, download the superheroes data. I'm going to go ahead and download this superheroes data on my computer because you will need to load this data set to do the, the, the practice problems. Um, tonight, I'm going to make these the, the actual exam for this semester. I haven't made those yet, but I'm going to make it very similar to this. So how you will do this part two of your exam is you're going to download this Word doc. And you will you will need to either type the answers or you will need to uh, attach screenshots um, and submit the Word file or, or convert it into a PDF. And that's going to be, um, I'm going to make it 25 points this semester. It used to be 20 points, but this semester I'll add a couple more problems, okay? So let's see, you will need StatCrunch 2 for this exercise. My word is so uh, slow, you guys. I don't know if you can see, but it's just jumping, jumping up and down. It's not doing anything. But let me go ahead and uh, while my Word document is loading, I'm going to open up StatCrunch and load the superhero data in here. And you guys know how to do this because you loaded census at school data. Data load from file. I'm going to click on on my computer. I will find or drag the superhero file and I will go ahead and upload this. So part two of your exam, you will have to do this. I haven't decided on which data set yet. I'll, I'll decide it tonight and I'll post it tomorrow morning. But this is just a practice problem, very similar to it. So I have 29 superheroes listed. What are we doing with this? Unfortunately, my Word doc is still jumping up and down. Let me go back to stack uh, canvas and see if I can download this one more time. It's crazy how slow they are. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video. Oh, hey, I think I just saw a word. I'm so sorry. Oh, no, that's not it. I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and then I will restart recording when my Word doc pops up. Two of them popped up. Mm -hmm. So let me close one of them. The circle of death is going around like, oh my gosh, it's so slow. You see all these circles, you guys? I hope your computer is not doing this. Okay, but here is the first question. For the variable height, centimeters, Report the mean and standard deviation. Round your answer to nearest tenth. Okay, so we need to find the mean and standard deviation for height. Let me go back to stat crunch. And go to stat, summary stat, columns. I need to find the mean and the standard deviation for height. Okay, I'll go ahead and click on height and I'll find mean and the standard deviation. I will compute this and this gave me an output table which I will just plan, I will just take a screenshot and then I'll just post up, put that table on the number one. Now why do I have these blanks? Because you know back in the days guys when we were meeting face to face I gave my students like hard copy of this paper and they were kind of uh, they were writing the, their answers here, but I don't need these blanks now. Or you know what? My, why not? Let me, let me go ahead and write it. 206.52. Why am I doing this? Because oh, I'm trying to round it to round your answers to nearest tenth. That's what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm trying to round my answers to nearest tenth. So, two, I'm sorry. 206.5 centimeters is the mean and the standard deviation is 100.7. What's the unit? You and I talked about this, remember? Standard deviation has the same unit 
as the original data, uh, data values. So it also has a standard deviation of 100. That's a big standard deviation. So what is going on in this superhero height data? Okay, maybe their, their heights are all very different. Maybe there are very short individuals and they are very tall superheroes, but we found the mean and the standard deviation. And this is what you guys can do for me for your test problems. Just give me the output table, but if you can please try to follow the rounding rule, that will be great. Let's keep going. Um, find the z-score for Yoda's height and Groot's height. Show work. Okay, I will do that. I'm going to go ahead and use my math typed here. I clicked on insert and then equation Yoda's Z score equals and you know Z score is a fraction right um, it's a quotient it's Yoda's height minus the average height what is Yoda's height let me go find Yoda I found Yoda right here. He's a male with brown eye. He's a Yoda species. White hair. Oh, here it is. Height is 66. Yoda is 66 centimeters tall. So I will do 66 minus the mean. And you're like, what's the mean? Oh, we just found it above. 206.5. And we're going to divide it by the standard deviation. 100.7 now listen yoda is a small superhero but is yoda is he small enough to be considered an outlier i don't know yet let me go ahead and find the z-score let me go to desmos desmos scientific calculator no this is google come on computer you can do this my computer is slowing down so much, you guys. Okay, I'm here. And I'm going to type in Yoda stuff. 66 minus, I forgot. I don't think I can buy a new computer. Oh, okay. I typed this. I just copied it. And it looks like. The Z score came out to be 1.395. And they, did they mention how to round it? It didn't. So let me just round it. And listen, Z scores are usually rounded to the nearest hundredth. Okay? So I'm going to round this to 1, negative 1.40. Okay? Negative 1.40. And I'll go ahead and type that in the direction this semester. I will say, please round the z-score to uh, two decimal places. Uh, z-scores are, you know, almost all the time rounded to uh, the nearest hundred. Okay. So looking at Yoda's z-score, would you say he is an outlier or not? I would say no. Why not? Because this number is not smaller than negative three. To be an outlier, Z-score has to be either smaller than neg negative 3 or bigger than positive 3. So Yoda is not an outlier. All right, let me go on and do the next guy, Groot. Wondering if they're talking about the baby Groot or the big Groot. G-R-O-O-T. Groot's Z-score equals. Okay. Z-score is a, a quotient, so what am I, I need to find Groot's height. And if you're like, what are you doing? Where, where did this come from? I need you to please go back and watch lesson 2.5 videos uh, where we all went over the, the Z-scores, okay? So let's see, the Z-score formula is the observation minus the average. So I'm over here trying to look up Groot's height. How tall was Groot? Uh, Groot is right here. <gasps> and Groot was 701 centimeters long. Okay, so let me type in 701. 701 minus the average. Um, the mean is 206.5. Uh, 
and I need to divide this by the standard deviation of 100.7. Okay, and I'm going to my calculator now. If I may just copy this, and I'm going to Desmos calculator, and I'll type in, oh my goodness, look at that big z-score of 4.91. So Groot z-score is 4.91. And let's go ahead and finish number two, okay? Um, based on the z-scores alone, who is an outlier? I'm going to say Groot is an outlier because why? His z-score is greater than three, okay? Because his z-score is greater than three. Yoda is not a, an outlier because this negative z-score is not small enough. If it's smaller than negative 3, Yoda could have been an outlier too, but it's only Groot. And um, I, can, I have another method to see if Groot is an outlier. We can create a box and whisker plot, but um, I wonder if I should keep going. Let me keep on going, okay? Let me keep on going and I may stop after the first page. Alrighty, let's go to number three. They said, find a five number summary for variable weight. Okay, let's talk about the, the, uh, the weights of these superheroes. You know how to find five number summary, or I hope you know what five number summaries are. So let's go to stat crunch. And I will go ahead and do stat, summary stat columns and we want the weight this time and what are the five number summary it's not me median and mode no 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 please look at section 2.5 slides okay i may even show you right now because this is a review for our test and in section 2.5 measures of position slides we talked about how five number summary consists of minimum. Oh, come on, slide. I sometimes wish my computers and everything can work faster. The circle of death is going round and round and round without giving me anything. Oh, but I think I'm about to find it. Oh, look at it. Here you go. Five number summary. You need the minimum, Q1, median, Q3, and maximum. Someone, If someone gives me mean, median, mode, variance, and standard deviation, that will be incorrect. Because five number summaries are those five things. So first, click on min, M-I-N, minimum. Next, we need Q1. Next, I need median. Next, I need Q3. And lastly, I need maximum. If I click in that order, it's going to give us the... And it doesn't have to be in order as long as you have those five things listed. I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot of this. And then I will go ahead and put that table right here. And without retyping, this is my answer. I have the five number summary for the weight. Okay. I hope, uh, be careful because I'm going to have a data set that has more than one quantitative variable. But if you accidentally find the five number summary for height, that's not going to be good. Okay. Watch out for which variable you're working with. Okay. Let's go to number four. Let me get rid of this random gap. Use the IQR to compute the upper and lower fence for outliers, weight, show work. Okay, let me give you the formula over here, okay? But before I do that, remember, I know you went back and watched the lesson 2.5 videos. I know you did that, right? Um, to find the IQR and the lower and upper fence, what we do is we come to this, we calculate some things first. Stat, summary stat, columns. I need Q1 
Q1, I need Q3, and I need IQR. So we're going to need to have, oh, forgot about, to, uh, to click on the weight. Hold on a second. I, I want to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. Yes, we're still working with weight. So I'll click on weight and find Q1, Q3, and IQR. These are the ingredients that you need to cook up those upper fins and the lower fins, okay? So have those little things listed there. And now we're ready to find some fences, okay? So let me go ahead and type the lower fence for you. Lower fence equal. Lower fence is equal to Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR. Okay, so what is Q1 in this data set? Q1 is 79 minus 1.5 times IQR is 67. Okay, so let's find what that is. I, my phone died and everything died. I may need to go to my Desmo scientific calculator. Oh dear. What happened? Okay. Going to my calculator and I'll type that in. And look, it came out to be negative 21.5. It came out to be negative 21.5. That's interesting. What does that tell us? Negative 21.5. What's the unit, by the way? These were in kilograms, right? Unless we have a superhero who weighs negative amount, we're not going to have any uh, outliers on the lower extreme because nobody is uh, lighter than negative 25 kil kilograms. I know we're talking about superheroes and all, but I think who is the lightest superhero real quick? I can come here and click on weight. And I can tell them to sort the table in ascending order. And I can see our little Groot is only 4 kilograms, but nobody is less than, and nobody has a weight that is negative. So what does this tell me? No superheroes are less than negative 21.5 kilograms. So there is no outlier on the lower... Um, uh, on the lower, can I just say lower side? That makes sense, right? You, you know what I mean by that. I have a typo, so this is not a word. Oh, okay, no superhero R. Okay, now let me do, oh no, I have another. Let me do the upper fence. Upper fence equals, and to find the upper fence, remember the formula that we went over in, 2.5, you do Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. Q3 is 146, that's very heavy. Minus, not minus, I'm sorry, plus 1.5 times the IQR of 67. Okay, let's see what that is. I'm going to go to a calculator and type that in. So any superhero who is heavier than 246.5 kilograms is going to be an outlier on the upper side, okay? So let me write that down. Who is heavier than any superhero who is heavier than 246.5 kilograms is an outlier. All right, let's see anybody's heavier than that. Oh my gosh, many superheroes are. So Iron Man, I did not know Iron Man was 191 pounds, maybe with his gears and everything. But I can see, you see, hold on, I zoomed in way too much. Um, Because I, guys, remember I clicked on weight and I clicked on this little triangle and told them to sort the table in ascending order. So my weights are in order, okay? I can see uh, four superheroes. These four numbers are uh, bigger than um, our upper fence, right? So Thor, Thanos, Hulk, and Juggernaut, they are uh, my outliers, okay? So I'll say, did they ask me to find them? 
Uh, use IQR to compute the upper and lower fence for outlier show work. No, they just wanted the upper and low, uh, lower fence. So I'm done with number four. They didn't really tell me to identify them. All right, what's next? They said, construct a box plot for weight, showing outliers in stat crunch, and paste the screenshot below. How many outliers do you see? We better see four, right? Because we just identified Thor, Thanos, Hulk, and Juggernaut. So we should see four dots. Um, are, what are the values of outliers and whom does it belong? Name the superheroes. So let's go and find the, or create the, 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 the chart first, the box plot first. So I'm back to stack crunch. I'll go to graph, box plot. Click on the weight. Tell them to use fences to identify outliers. And then I will draw the box horizontally. I like to draw it horizontally. It doesn't matter. If you like the vertical model better, of course, you, you, you use it. For some reason, I want to go with the orange scale today. And then I'm not going to mess with the title. I will just go ahead and compute it. This is not good because I should make up the title. You know what? I will. Super heroes weights. Okay. Oh my goodness. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. I'm going to make this a little bit longer. And I will click on these dots. This dot. When I click on these dots, it highlights who this value belongs to. Thor, Thanos, Hulk, and Juggernaut. That's it. So I'm going to go ahead and take a screenshot of this my superhero's weight box plot. And I'll include that picture over here. And they said, what are the values of the outliers and whom does it belong? You know, I may just even do that. Can I just go ahead and, no, I'll go ahead and list it. I was gonna take a screenshot, but I can, I can go ahead and uh, write these answers down. Okay. Okay, so these belong to Thor, who is 288 kilograms, Thanos, who is 443 kilograms, oh, gee, Hulk, who is 630 kilograms, and lastly, Juggernaut is 855 kilograms. But you see there is no dot on the left side, okay, on the lower end. So no superheroes are too too light to be considered an, an outlier. So these four superheroes were just too tall or too heavy. Okay, who I've been going for a while. Maybe I will take a break now and then let this video process first and I'll come back and finish six through 10 on another video, okay?